Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the next episode in the Edison Encyclopedia. This time featuring a deck that a lot of you might be fans of and uh, is probably the deck that defined 2023. And that is, of course, Vayu Turbo. And we can't talk about Vayu Turbo without bringing the innovator and creator of the deck itself, Mr. James. James Ark, how are you doing today, my friend? Hey, man. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. And thanks for the nice intro. <laughs> I always like to, you know, <laughs> embellish my guests as much as I can. But uh, we're here to uh, just hear everything you have to say about this one wonderful creation of yours because this is probably one of the faces of Edison now. And uh, for those of you who are new to the this style of video, what we're going to be doing is after a brief introduction, we're going to go in depth and probably do one of the most in-depth Bayou profiles imaginable. And after that, if you don't care about any of that, you can go ahead and skip ahead and check out where James is going to be piloting the deck and uh, showing us his insights, talking his plays through and uh, talking about from the mind and master himself, uh, how this deck should be piloted. So James, why don't you go ahead and start by telling us uh, how Bayou turns came to be in the first place because i think it's quite an interesting story yeah i appreciate that uh yeah so i played vayu back in 2010 in actual edison format you know it was a pretty different list but the core concepts were pretty much the same i just remember kind of sitting around in these decks with hamster and raiko were getting really popular i'm thinking about like flamvel and things like that um people were experimenting a lot with these decks because i think hamster was a tcg exclusive that just came out and uh people were splashing those engines into everything and I was kind of trying to think of like just a different deck to play. Um, I was testing a lot online with my friends and stuff. I just kind of started piecing stuff together. Like I didn't want to play Twilight. I didn't want to play, um, you know, some big like Judgment Dragon payoff deck, but I kind of figured out this like mid range deck with some of the good Blackwing cards. Like you still have the good payoffs from the mills and then uh, can also get to play stuff like Royal Oppression and just a bunch of kind of good stuff, Dark Engine. So yeah, I, I kind of put it together and just immediately was like, wow, this deck's actually working really well and it's really fun to play. I got a few of my friends to play it as well. And we were all just like, wow, this is actually a really good deck. And I brought it to the event. You know, my skills were not what they are today and the list was different. Um, I remember, I, I don't think I was playing Armageddon. I was just playing Greffers and like, maybe one Icarus attack, something like this. I think I went X and three at the event. And I, I, so I just barely missed the top. I think I lost in time just to my own mistake. But uh, yeah, sometimes I think about if things would be different if somehow on the, the Edison page, even if I lost, if the deck list was just featured from an early an early time, I think people would have caught onto it sooner. Started playing again in 2020 and uh, been mostly using Bayou and similarly caught on really quickly with a lot of other online players playing it in tournaments and doing well. Um, definitely not, can't take full credit because other people have definitely innovated along the way, but I definitely, I would say made the, the core structure of the list and have also updated it at various points that other people have taken inspiration from. And, uh, this also isn't the only deck you're known for either piloting or creating. You do have your own YouTube channel, which I'll have linked down in the description so people can check you out there. Uh, but let's go ahead and start by talking about what is the main overall objective of this deck? What, if you're someone who is new to this deck, what are they trying to do? Because I also feel like this is really misunderstood by a lot of people, even people that play Edison a lot. Vayu Turbo is based around abusing Vayu Emblem of Honor. I mean, that's obvious. It banishes itself and uh, another black wing, usually Sirocco, from your graveyard to get a free armed wing from the extra deck. So a free 2300 beater, its effect is negated. In a complete vacuum, that's, that's a plus one, which are sort of hard to come by in Edison in this type of way. Just on a basic level, that is what you were trying to achieve. You're trying to get free big guys by banishing Vayu and Sirocco. You know, one thing that I've kind of noticed, because these are also sort of the preference and decks that I like to play because I think in Edison you're really starting to see the beginning of these mechanics that would become popular later on like graveyard as a second hand is something I hear people talk about a lot but in Edison for the most part I feel like your hand is just your hand there's certainly cards that interact with the grave but Vayu is definitely one of the best decks at like stacking all your resources in grave and then being able to kind of banish them at will, not like a light sworn wolf where you have to summon it as soon as you mill it. Like this allows you to really like pace the game out and just push with your resources when you're ready. And I feel like this is kind of like a precursor to, you know, dragon rulers or like infernoid or like orcas to even tier elements. Like these are these are decks actually that I really like as well. A whole other stuff in modern, I'm sure, plays from the grave. You're really just based around milling through your deck to get the value in Sirocco and Grave. Most of the rest of the deck's built around that. I think a good point to start from there then is we have so you have three Vayu, but interestingly, in your build, you only have two Sirocco, the build that we're showing here, obviously. Now, I, as someone who watches your content, uh, I know the reason for this, but I think this is definitely an interesting point of discussion.
suggestion as to why you'd only want to play two Sirocco when obviously Sirocco and Vayu synergize so well together and what the deck is ultimately trying to achieve. Yeah, you know, this is something I've gone back and forth on myself and it's definitely not, I would say, a universal standard. I think a lot of people still play three if you look up other lists. You, it's easy to say, oh, it's good to draw, it's good to mill, like you always want to see it, I, I might as well max it, you know? Um, if you're looking at it like this deck where you're really trying to mill the highest density of uh, relevant cards, cards that will have some effect in the grave as possible, you would want to max it. Drawing multiples is really bad. I mean, they're, they're normal summons. You can only summon once per turn and you have to control no monsters. So even you can't like summon it next to anything. And just the ratios always work out well for me. It's like not drawing too many, but being able to mill it with the targeted milling, like the Armageddon or the Greffers when I need to. Um, just allows me to kind of see it enough, but not too much. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I mean, I think um, that's pretty self-explanatory enough. Um, yeah. That's also what the armors and the Greffers are here for. Obviously, these also go in different varying ratios as well. I've seen some people play like one armor. I've seen uh, sometimes up to like going the extreme with three Greffer. Uh, what are your thoughts on these? If you look at the structure of the deck, um, you're really just filling up on, you know, your, your Rikos and the Hamsters to search them. Some people play Charge and these get like a trooper, those are kind of your bread and butter, like engine pieces, you could say, because like, those are the cards that are going to get you to the value in Sirocco, like at a neutral card exchange. Like if Ryko off something, you're just one for one. If trooper is going to draw you a card regardless. Um, but if you're getting the extra piece in the grave, then that's just like additional value on top. You know, the rest of the deck is really just filled with like targeted sends, the Armageddon, the Greffer, and the, the Road to Search Zone, which are just like the other pieces of that puzzle. Because uh, I think usually like when I started with, uh, you know, Banishing Value and Sirocco in a vacuum is a plus one. I mean, the obvious question is like, yeah, but like they have to get there somehow, you know, they, they died somehow. How that exchange worked out would depend like if you're actually ahead in the game or not. In a, in a pretty simple scenario, like if you mill with a Raiko and you hit a Value or Sirocco, and then on your turn, you summon Armageddon and send the other piece and banish it, like, then you have done it for a plus one. You know, the Armageddon essentially is like a, a super cracked deep sea diva, <laughs> if you want to think about it that way. It's like 1400 guy that summons a 23. That's like almost half your life. In Greffer's case, it is half your life. A teensy preview of like deck strategy stuff. It's like, sure. you usually want to use your random milling first. So you have like the highest density of cards you want to mill in your deck. And then you follow up with the Greffers, the Armageddon. And that's like really how the deck plays. And the rest of it just fills out with, you know, enough like good standalone generic cards to help you survive or, you know, trade off, deal with their threats when you're not able to hit or you don't mill so good or whatever. And then you have, you know, bombs like Dark Arm, Burial, Return. Some people play Chaos Sorcerer as well. And like those are just meant to dominate the late game. But it's it's pretty streamlined as far as like what it's meant to do, just kind of like the best good stuff, dark cards and the best ways to find them. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I like so much about this deck is that aside from we've already had the Blackwing episode go live by this point, like Blackwing, obviously all the cards are named Blackwing. So like archetype synergistic cards existing, they're meant to go together. But this is sort of, you're just playing off the dark synergy. So it sort of pays homage to older Yu-Gi-Oh where you're taking just sort of the best good stuff, dark cards. And even in some cases, you know, other supporting cards like the Mega Hamster for the, the Rikos, the Card Trooper, just to sort of feed whatever it is your deck is trying to do. I think that's just a lot of fun. And also when we're talking about Edison fundamentals, one thing I'm really trying to reiterate with people who might be conditioned for modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is that sticking a 2300 vanilla for all intents and purposes in Edison is good. It's pressure. And I think a yes. lot of people <laughs> may not like think that playing Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2024, that is the case. You have to completely rewire yourself to think differently in this format because a, a giant beater like this adds a lot of pressure to the board. Yeah, it just beats every normal summon that they can have basically. And in this format, like your normal summons are your starters, you know, like a, yeah. a Shura, a Gladiator Beast, Laquari, a, a Stratos or an Alias. Like this just inherently lets you get over all those. And something that is also pretty important to point out um, on a similar point is like, you make the first Armwing, right? With the Vayu and Sirocco. That Armwing goes to Grave. Then you put the other Vayu in Grave somehow, Ascend or a Mill or whatever you have in the Grave already. And then you can make the Armor Master. Same thing that lets you make, you can banish the Armor Master and another value, the last value for a silver one. So it, it links up. It's a chain of summons that like, it basically makes each one a floater, you could say, like, as you know, as long as you have access to the values and that's the whole game of the deck. So it's right. like, you're summoning, you're not only summoning a 2300, like free or, or like card even guy that beats their whole board, but like 
if they use any removal on it, then you're just getting an even bigger one. Right. So it kind of puts them in a tough spot. And like just the constant stream of big guys is really hard for the decks to deal with as well. It's almost kind of like absolute zero where the ab zero pays yes. for half of the condition of the next ab zero to get dropped after the miracle fusion. But uh, the nice thing is exactly. you don't need the spell card to go with it because the value in the Sirocco, or in this case, just the value actually with the, the synchro is the piece. So that's really yeah. neat. Um, I think we can move on to some of the other uh, just supporting ancillary pieces we have in the deck here. Uh, so let's talk about sure. Caius. I mean, Caius really needs no introduction, probably one of the faces of Edison if we're going to look at some of the best cards in the format. But uh, let's talk about his role in the deck. Exactly. Like Caius, you could probably... I I've literally seen people play Caius in like Hero Beat, like just like one or two, and it somehow still works. So <laughs> I really do feel in all, for all intents and purposes, you could splash Caius in almost any deck and it would be like, at least fine. Um, here, I mean, it's definitely better than fine. Like, first of all, I mean, you're, you're playing a whole cast of dark cards to support it, Allure. You can pitch it with Greffer, you can pitch it with Greffer to special summon Greffer. It fuels Dark Iron, so it's just like, there's an inherent baseline of synergy there. But it's also just a really good standalone card, and kind of like I was saying, you know, if you're not milling so good, or if you don't have, um, maybe you just didn't draw any Bayou Sirocos, you're sitting on the Greffers without anything to pitch for them yet. You know, just doing simple plays like Hamster or Raikou into a Caius, or just Brain Caius, or like any way to stick a Caius. I mean, that's going to keep you in the game at least a couple turns. On top of that, I mean, one uh kind of downside to the game plan i was just describing where you're trying to summon a continuous stream of the synchros assuming they all go to grave i mean them all going to grave is the tough part because especially the way the formats evolved and people learn to play against this deck they're always going to try to bottomless or deep prison or their own caius on one of your synchros so you can't keep getting continuous value off it if you just do something simple like you know banish uh the volume Sirocco for an armed wing and then tribute it for a caius like not only have you made like a big burst play out of nowhere, and uh, there aren't really many decks that could do that in Edison, and you're actually seeing in this day and age a lot of decks gravitate towards like the ability to do stuff like that, like Infernal Prodigy Caius or Instant Fusion Caius has gotten really popular at least recently. Being able to just do that is already really powerful, but it ensures that the armor is going to stay in grave and not get banished. So it like kind of keeps your engine rolling as well. Let's go ahead and uh, not forget about the supplementary, supplementary Blackwing, uh, Mr. Gale the Whirlwind, everyone's favorite limited Blackwing. Uh, what role does he serve in the deck? Yeah, I mean, it's a level three tuner um, and you can special summon it beside this Rogo to make a level eight. It actually does come up quite a bit. There are a lot of OTK lines in this deck. Some people think of it as a like a purely OTK deck and over a given tournament or something. I'll, I'll definitely have a few games where I just open some crazy auto in hand, but it doesn't do it as much as people think. Gale is also sort of a part of that, even when you're not making synchros. Like if you have uh, Armed Wing and like Armageddon, you can special the Gale next to it. Like if you have like Dark Arm on top of this, you know, uh, things like this uh, can really push for a lot of damage very, very quickly. So it's really just like an extender, but it also, you know, one small thing like you can also use it sometimes to make an armed wing uh the bard make it um yeah. with a necrogarner or a reaper or something or or armor master with the hamster and so even when you don't have access to your millers or you don't get the sirocco engrave sometimes you can do that and if one of those goes to grave then you still have access to your body plays that's a crazy card uh speaking of crazy cards we got this card right here is also limited uh card trooper this is just offensive Raikou for all intents and purposes <laughs> yeah basically like proactive Raikou mills in main one so it's like it can set you up for dark iron or like mill another piece if you already had one engrave like it's it's a you could really sack someone with it but i mean trooper kind of like pious it's like you could probably put trooper in any deck and it wouldn't really be that bad but it also like this is sort of a combo deck it's like aggro combo you know yeah so it drawing a card deeper to your bombs is also really good it just like does everything you want to and if trooper stays on the on the field for more than like a turn cycle in this deck like you almost always win like it just they have to deal yeah. with it it's yeah. so powerful and get really out of hand. Dark Armed, obviously. Uh, Gore, similarly. These are just your, your typical bombs. I don't really think these warrant too much discussion here. I will say yeah. uh, the amount of graveyard manipulation this deck has is incredible. You could probably be like 20 turns into a game and still be able to summon Dark Armed Dragon, which is pretty incredible just because you have so much control between the Vayus, the Plague Spreader. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. that's... You yeah, could maybe argue it's one of the best Dark Armed decks for that reason. <laughs> yeah, you could easily be at six Darks, and if you go... Vi, you banish two of them and then plague stack you're back at three yeah um so yeah it, it's almost like never the case where you've over milled like there's certain cards that 
you know you'll never be able to banish the Greffers, the Caiuses, whatever. Right. So if you mill too many of those, but that's pretty unlikely in the early game. You, you can usually always get it live. Necroguard is an interesting choice. This is something that I see uh, popping in and out of different value lists. What are your thoughts on Necroguard now? Yeah, uh, Gorse is also something that goes in and out. And uh, for now, it's in. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but Necrogarden is very, very good. I think Necrogarden is like absolutely essential, um, especially... I mean, it's strong in every matchup if you mill it for free. Like, then it's just you're happy it's there sure. but especially like if you're going first against um like blackwing or flamvel or gladiator beast like those last two obviously people who play a lot of this and they're gonna be like oh those decks are fake anyway it's <laughs> like you do play against them especially at irl tournaments and aren't prepared like imagine the scenario where you just go like armageddon send a plague or send a Bayou or something sure. not really expecting anything and they just flamvel fire dog over like <laughs> you're you're gonna be in a pretty bad spot or or uh gladiator beast and tag for a ready Ari. just doing stuff like arma and necro turn one especially if you have a caius in hand you know that's a pretty strong play if you don't have a lot of other gas and i just think i just think it's so important for like a, a set of matchups for sure also like stardust necro Gardner, even if they drop like a judgment dragon or their own dark armed like you're gonna be able to weather that storm it uh really lets you set up some kind of like checkmate scenarios like mid late game also with sirocco they can't summon their own circle and pump over it let that survive for a turn let you crack back so i think it's really really strong and it's also searchable with the rota like if you ever in a situation where you have a greffer and you want the discard fodder sometimes i'll just go search the necrogarden and then use it for the greffer i think for people who haven't played older Yu-Gi-Oh! like when Necrogardna was first released. Uh, they, they may write this card off, but in older Yu-Gi-Oh! Necrogardna was actually quite strong. And just as you described, whiffing so many different situations where, I mean, you talked about the Arma send Necrogard to play. Like people would just normal summon Krebons and like that's a legitimate move, right? That's just yeah. that with extra steps, but it gets you two darks, right? So uh, it, it's it's definitely a defensible card. And to people who are more modern pilled, don't write this card off just because it... it it, all it does is blanket attack by banishing. It's also graveyard manipulation, which is important. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like in, in a format where it's so still normal summon reliant, like you don't yeah. have a way to just flood the board super easily. Like if you stop their attack, you basically stop the normal summon, right? Exactly. So I think it's pretty strong. And also like, I think someone playing a lot of modern would look at this as like a brick and it is a brick. Like I don't want to draw a lot of my Necrogarden is a lot of values, especially without the Greffer. Right. Um, those are the cards that you brick on. I will say that in this format, like specifically the way it's developed and um, the fact that like everyone plays Raiko, you know, Raiko is a very commonly played card. You can very easily, if you do draw the values or the Necrogardeners or the Plague even, whatever, you can just like swing with them into their face downs if you know they're Raikos or suspect them to be Raikos and beta pop on that or vice versa, you know, set them, get them Raiko, pop it, like use them with the Torrential. Like there's a lot of ways to utilize those cards and get them out of your hand and sometimes even like card neutral exchange. Speaking of Raikou, we can talk about Raikou as well as Super Nimble Mega Hamster just because both cards really go hand in hand. Uh, I think one question I have for you, obviously, we talked about Charge of the Light Brigade before. Charge and uh, Raikou obviously sort of fill similar roles, but uh, not seeing Charge in your list. So we can talk about uh, both of these cards, but I'm also just curious on your thoughts on, on Charge as well. Yeah, this is more or less the list I've used the past like month and a half um, with, you know, a couple card swaps at a couple of different tournaments I played. For a very long time, I was very Charge pilled and uh maybe i still am you know like i still think it, it went in a big cycle you know like i was playing charge at the very start and i kind of thought like charge is too good not to play you know it's like a power spell like trooper it mills you in main one so it kind of can let you change how you want to play out the turn um depending on what you mill which is which is really good to be honest and uh you know even if they if you just have a Raiko, you know they're able to kias it same thing with hamster but charge you're like guaranteeing the mills so in decks that have different ways to deal with your face down monsters getting that proactive milling um at the very bare minimum is very good and then a lot of people played two hamster and i was like very anti i was like i'm sticking with the charge you guys are crazy for cutting charge blah blah, blah. <laughs> and uh as time went on i don't really know what i would say exactly shifted in my mind one thing in this particular list i am playing three kaias so getting the additional body like if they if you ever set hamster going first and they swing into it with the stratos or whatever and you get the Raiko, and then you're able to, on your turn, even if you, maybe they don't even set a back row because they don't want it to be popped with the Raiko, but if you just go tribute for Caius, like all of these little exchanges, like Raiko pop their back row, tribute for Caius, like these should put you so far ahead. And so kind of trying to maximize um, those opening sequences led me to be on two hamster and playing in more like IRL um, tournaments, bigger open fields, people that maybe 
aren't as experienced with the format like people just run into your hamster all day and like if that happens it just often puts you really far ahead compared to charge where it's like they know it's a raiko they can maybe bait it out and like you're just not getting as much value overall um charge is still really good chaos sorcerer specifically i would say because it can help you know guarantee that that gets live faster but yeah as of right now i really like hamster i think the biggest thing too is that at the end of the day hamster is a body and charge isn't yeah. and in edison a lot of the times too you might find yourself in game states where let's say you just flip the hamster get your Ryko. you can have a couple turns where you're just poking with the hamster and getting in that exactly. damage and that's edison's a very life point based format and so those yeah. couple pokes with the the nimble mega hamster can just make the difference sometimes this deck especially i mean it's like there are definitely combos that deal eight thousand, but there are a lot more combos that deal like six to seven thousand you right. know so it's like getting getting a couple pokes in is super relevant and yeah like you said it's a body like you can use it with plague um they don't want to waste a removal on it because they're already plus exactly. like it's it's kind of awkward at that point uh even with the low it's attack really strong. Yeah. it's really strong if it ever resolves for sure yeah. For sure. Uh, last monster, Spirit Reaper. Uh, just, I mean, we're on the theme of good dark. Spirit Reaper is uh, is a house. <laughs> yes. Yeah, si similarly, uh, I was very anti Reaper for a while. Um, I'm a very stubborn, stubborn player. Um, <laughs> but yeah, some people talked with uh, multiple hamsters and Reaper. Shout out to Ten FD. Reaper after a while. So, like you mentioned at the very start, I play a lot of different decks. I've, I've I kind of stopped playing value for a while because I wanted to just explore the format more and like just just experiment with other decks and figure if there's anything that could beat value like that was also sort of a part of it like if i know a lot of people are going to be on these types of decks and like i basically know all the ins and outs of those decks like can i figure out something to beat it that was kind sure. of just a fun challenge for myself too in a lot of those decks what i found is like right before i built this version of this deck i was playing a lot of diva hero there's a video on my channel about it too but i would just always notice like that's a very uh you know, build your resources up and combo them and like apply pressure type deck. A couple opening turns are often quite slow and I can be draw passing, like sitting on a gores or, or a bluffing that I have gores. It, I noticed just every time like a, my opponent would summon Reaper and just punish me so hard and it would just be so damaging and so hard to deal with and i just wasn't in the habit of expecting it i mean i think by this point it's really started to pick up that people are using it i even played a guy using it in frogs the other day and wow like i keep going back to like trooper kaius reaper you probably put these in any deck and yeah it, it fits the dark theme and uh people talk about this thing that uh i don't know how often this really comes up but if you have a, a monster set a lot of people are going to think it's a raiko so they might not commit a lot of stuff to the board. They don't want it to get popped and they might think, okay, well, if I don't do anything, then he can't flip his Riker for value. Like he's going to have to extend. But if it's Reaper, if they incorrectly read it and it's just flip Reaper attack, then that's like a huge punish. And then you yeah. can set your Raiko and it puts them in a really awkward spot where now they have to like deal with two things and get popped and get hand ripped again. It's like, it could be really too. out of control. Love Reaper. It's such a cool card. Yeah, um, it's fun. Everyone does it for the monsters, though. Uh, spells pretty straightforward. There's only six of them, and five of them are like some of the best spells in the game. So yeah. I don't really think there's only much People to talk play about. All the same spells. Yeah. I think, I think Burial might be the only one worth discussing, just because I feel yeah. like this is really the only deck that truly takes advantage of this card. Yeah, it's kind of sneaky good. And yeah. I will say that it feels a little misused because if I'm playing this deck, I always want to be returning two values. Like I want to use the burial as I want to get two monsters to summon off it. Um, and that sometimes requires some setting up, but unless it's going to be game or something, I, it's not very likely that I'll ever just go like banish value Sirocco, immediately burial to banish them again and push for 46. You know, it's like burial is a super high value card as the game goes on. And um yeah, it's just like I've been in so many top deck scenarios against Bayou and they rip the burial and it's just like I mean they they if it's a late game and you're both low resource and suddenly they're getting like two twenty five hundreds or like a twenty five and a twenty eight, like it's just what are you gonna do? That's just game at that point. It's uh it's nice yeah. just saving this as like your last card possible because then it's just it's just yeah. game. Uh, and then traps, again, your typical defensive traps, your bottomless, your deep prison, your mirror force. Uh, return, this is a very strong return deck. I know like stuff like, you know, Diva Hero or other decks can take advantage of this as well. But uh, the fact that this deck does banish quite frequently, and not to mention, if you're looking at this deck in a vacuum, sure, it can banish enough plenty on its own, but you have to think your opponent's going to be throwing their bottomlesses, their Kaises, their deep, yep. uh, deep prisons at you. So you're also going to have that fueling your return as well. You want to talk about this a little bit? 100%. Yeah, like like you just said, like you would, <laughs> I keep making the same joke, <laughs> <laughs> but like you apply bear return in other in a lot of other decks too that even that don't banish a lot just because there's so much banishing in the format like i've seen people try it in heroes and stuff too um but this deck is like 
perfect return dig. Yeah. I mean, dark armed return, if you ever get that off, just crazy. You can even like dark armed target the return and chain it just to get an extra summon off it. Crazy stuff. You can pump with like multiple Sirocos if you get a big field back and make multiple synchros so you're not just getting everything banished during the end phase and one of the craziest things i've done and just this came up fairly recently so it's fresh in my mind but i was in the finals of a big tournament for like a ultimate rare kindness so a, a hefty prize he didn't even have any cards on the field but i returned and i got like plague uh sirocco double value or something I, I had to think for a while but what i ended up doing is just uh Black Rosing myself. Like, he didn't have any cards, I think, on the field, maybe one or something. But I just wanted all that stuff back in the grave. And then I was able to push for even more damage by banishing the Vayu Sirocco, stacking with the Plague, making an eight, then making another Synchro with the Vayu. Like, it was just like, and all those guys are going to stick around because they're not off the return. So it also can sometimes like reset all your resources similar to a burial. That's incredible. That's a sick play. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Um, anything else in the traps? I mean, I'd say like oppression obviously is something we could yeah. touch on a little bit. This is like one of the best oppression. Let's decks touch too. on it. Cause yeah. just, just, you got to bow down to oppression yeah. and, and <laughs> you could play, you could play too. You know, I, I know um, I've seen people play zero and it makes sense if you think you're going to play against a lot of mirror matches or against a lot of black wings. The more I play and just play against people on Dueling Book or or in big tournaments, especially when older people, like uh, or people that play Modern even, come back and play Edison. Combo, combo pilled, combo brained, and they want to play some like maxed out, like light sworn teleport zon, you know, it's like, <laughs> these are the decks that I see people build when they come to play Edison for the first time. They get their day ruined real fast by oppression. It's just like an equalizer. Like all of the really, really high roll stupid decks just get demolished by oppression. Like you flip it and they lose if they don't have the answer. And with Vayu, I mean, probably people know this, but the value effect is not a cost. So you activate it in grave. If they choose to oppression it, they just pay 800, everything stays in the grave. So really it works perfectly through oppression. Like they can't oppression it. And it's really just your dark armed, your plague or, you know, random stuff like that, that get hurt by it. So it's one of the only decks that can main it. And even Blackwing, like they main oppression often as well, but they sort of have this problem sometimes where if they have their own oppression up, you know, they can't make a synchro and their strongest attack guy is 2000. Uh, and so they need something else like a clue or a removal spell to get over any big monsters on board. Whereas in this deck, you could be making 2300s, uh, 25s, 28s, uh, the value synchros through the oppression, easier to keep those bodies on board to tribute for the Kaias. It's honestly the best oppression deck, in my opinion. We also touched on the synchros, uh, you know, Armed Wing, Armor Master, and Silver Wind, for all intents and purposes, are just 23, 25, 2800 vanillas, respectively, because most of the time we're just cheating them out. Sometimes, like you said, you could make it with Gale, but it's pretty infrequent with this deck. Anything else specifically yep. in the extra deck you want to touch on? I mean, it's just pretty much your typical good stuff synchros, I would say. Yeah, I mean... I find um, Dark End to come up quite a bit, and and Brianak, you know, Brianak is super strong in this format in general. I mean, just, I feel like gotta be one of, like, the best synchros of all time or something. Yeah. But, you know, if you do draw too many of the Vayu Sirocco Necrogranite type pieces, sometimes you can just pitch them all for that. And since you have priority, like, they can't even really stop it. So that can that can help you with some big pushes. And, uh, yeah, Dark End, like, you know, it was hard to find in actual Edison time, but we played right. with it as far as all the tournaments now. And uh, you can make that really easily with Armed Wing or Caius and the Plague. Like I said before, it's like if you have more values in Grave, then that you could just make an Armor Master immediately after, pop with the Dark End, push for a bunch of damage. It lets you, like, play around Gores, too. And, yeah, just, like, I find myself making that card. I want to talk about deck dev because there are other decks that play this card. Um, Blackwing sometimes play it. Uh, sometimes people that play Deep Sea Diva can make Catastrophe and play it. But this is, in my mind, by a pretty wide margin, the best deck dev deck. Similar to Oppression, like just all the, the stupid decks that people play, um, deck dev just destroys. And uh, again, from my experience testing all these different decks trying to beat Bayou, there's so many things that I, I think in like a normal, fair game, can can compete pretty well with value but as soon as the deck dev gets flipped it's just like such a headache um frogs it gives you a really hard time and so i think the fact that this has such a versatile side with like the deck devs and more royal oppression just gives it a really solid game against a lot of the uh trickier decks in the format perfect well let's go ahead and load up into edison raid and see how it performs all right here we are uh rock paper scissors james what are, what kind of guy are you you know, I, I it's funny you say that. I have a method that my friends joke about. I have the dice on desk. Method. That's what I, I do. Dice on my desk. I, do. I roll. So we got a three, which is paper. 
See, and the or die playing. always fails. That's the but. See, then it's yeah. not your fault. Yeah, it's the it, dice it works fault. pretty badly. <laughs> not gonna lie. In Dragon rather... ninety five. Was that Zoa? That's Zoa. Was that Zoa? OG. Okay. Comment comment below if you love Zoa. If you prefer Metal Zoa, then you're wrong. Comment. I think you're wrong. I think regular Zoa is way better. <laughs> All right, decent starter. Do you think he's gonna be scared because he's playing against Simo himself? Uh, it's funny. Like sometimes, like people don't even realize it's me. And so, you know, it, it really can depend. But we'll see. Maybe he thinks you're an imposter. I, I've had that many times, too. O. So many times people ask me, like, are you the real Simo? Funny. They're counting the O's. All right, T-Set um, Pass, how you feeling? Okay, so so we're in the we're in the game. I'm just Armageddon Knighting first. Okay, sure. I want to thin the deck before I use the Allure, and I'm not even necessarily going to Allure right away. So I'm using that. Um, I think here we're going to dump our trusty Necrogard. We discussed it in the, <laughs> the additional. I, just, I, I want that guy in the grave. Sure. I want him there. And I'm going to swing. We're going to hope it's a Raikou. There's a pretty good chance it's not, but we're going to swing it. Set okay, debris. debris dragon. Interesting. Not what I was expecting. Probably trying to set up for a monarch. I'm still down to set the D prison. Um, I think the chances that he like monarchs are back row is super unlikely. Right. So. Typically, Caius they always hit the monster just because it's the most value. I mean, maybe he can summon a you know a level three and make a synchro. But hopefully, our D prison can deal with a lot of stuff. And honestly, if he answers the arm again, they are not really in that bad of a spot because he sets well, first. Well, apparently, they read our mind that they want to they want to go after the back row. Uh, sure. Yeah, if he attacks this, I'm trying to think if we should necrogarn it, but I'm going to say that we're probably fine to not. Just let it go. You want a second to think? Okay, no, you're, you're convinced. No. So it may appear that we're down bad. But I hope he didn't have dust shoot. Um, Looks like we're So right. once again, I'm actually content to hold the allure. I'm just down to set hamster and set mirror force. Um, that should help us weather this turn unless he has like another Caius or you know the back removal there's not really a lot of stuff that we can draw with the allure that's going to give us better plays like having b more traps would help but um there's also a pretty good chance that like we might want to use the scrapper level two tuner that. not gonna lie i was not expecting magic Dragon. this guy might be playing some sort of like flip dragon deck or or you know dragons with Caius because i can't really see any other reason why you play magic Dragon other than if you're playing bunch of other dragons right well it's uh, so it's cooking us we so. uh so here i'm gonna say we should necrogarn him because okay. also we have the burial in hand so like worst comes to worst we can always put it back and like if we draw a caius or you know get hit oh okay he wants that extra structure that's certainly cool. i would flip the hamster here just thin the deck of one of the raikos and then we're probably gonna activate the allure afterwards divine rat we are getting a didn't see that coming <laughs> didn't see that coming I'm not gonna lie that one came out of nowhere for me Every time okay. with, the, with the content duels, every time. Yeah, I love that. All right, I, love, I love that that occurred. Uh, next, we will be just a luring is fine. I mean, you never know. I, I After we got to Vine Wrath, Wrath, nothing's off the table. Magic. I'm sorry. I'm like, um, oh. Okay, so, well, we can't use that. that yeah. start. Okay, well, honestly, I'm fine to banish the Greffer. Could like burial back the gardener to like protect to set yeah the skies. i'm thinking if it's i want to do that or if i um we can also burn the mirror force to to do it too which sure. might be better if we're going to use the storm anyway i would probably summon the arma and here i would send plague and you know there's, there's a world in which we could react him here but i sure. don't think it's completely necessary it's been a very interesting uh game one <laughs> to say oh the yeah least. never a dull moment what other format will you see this what is he looking at his grave for? Every time I look at their grave, I'm like, what is what is he what is he trying to do? Call of Haunted would go hard for him. Yeah. If they play Avarice, which I don't know if they would, they're one from that, I guess. We had a, a previous like, we had a previous duel where someone resolved like three Avarices against us in one game. That was fun. Very cool. <laughs> Love when that happens. The problem here is like even if we drop the Caius and banish the Stardust, it's like storming uh against potential Starlight Road and stuff is also really right. scary. I'm probably just doing it because that's that's how I'm built, and it's not it's not my rating at risk, you know. So <laughs> that's the best way to look at it. You have yeah. nothing to lose for the Kai's nice. instead of the blue, not eyes. blue eyes. Okay, okay. Another just... Magna Drago. <laughs> Could not have seen that. I, I literally <laughs> thought I was like, why wouldn't he get the blue eyes? Does he have a level two tuner? Like, that makes sense. He's going full dragon. Wow, this is kind of cool. I, this is not gonna lie, it's kind of. Cool. I was gonna say, yeah, like if you like dragons, like there are other dragon yeah. decks, but this if is you cool. Love dragons. Well, I mean, the good thing is have plays. Like it saves us some damage, and if we're gonna storm anyway, I'm thinking. So if we mirror force, and then we're just gonna the red dragon's just gonna swing over the armor, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas if we don't use the mirror force, then we can play banish the Stardust and use the mirror force to protect the guys. Mm -hmm. Um, does seem. Uh, uh, hmm. Sorry, this is gonna. 
You're good. I think I think I want to use it. I think I want to use it. I'm okay. just going to say use it. All right. Part of that is because, like, if we put ourselves in a position where we have to protect the Kaias and, like, and have to use the Mirror Force, then I just... He, dude, he had Divine Wrath. I don't know what the hell he's doing <laughs> on this guy's deck. So I'm Not just spooked by that. Oh, he didn't... We didn't attack. Uh, maybe forgot. Or maybe... I tried it. I'm just going to try to rewind, for sure. Also, Seto's daddy is watching us. Can we... Can we channel the, the power of Seto Kaiba? He's watching because it's Dragon 95. <laughs> okay, so... Be... Interesting. Decided not to attack. Oh, probably because we have two darks. Maybe they're afraid of dark arm. Like yeah, that would be like I, a weird reason, but that's the only thing I, I could think I'm, of. Hold on, read Red Dragon real quick. I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have to pop this, but I think he can like make that trigger first and then and then have Stardust come back after. Probably. I, th I'm, I think so. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to pursue it. Okay, so I would just lead on Kaya's target right. the Stardust. See if it works. Okay. And then we storm. And if this works, we're in the money. We might get Starling Rated and feel real stupid. Mine Wrath. Oh! It's oh, stuck. Baby. It's stuck. Right okay. All right. So, so now we got how many warrior? Yeah. How many warriors do we have? Uh, we have two. Oh, magic number. Okay. So <laughs> we're gonna stack the Kaya's for plague. This is good. This is what I like to see. He doesn't have any warriors, right? Uh, no. Because it's the dragon yeah. deck. Of course not. I mean, he had a fiend. So so we're just gonna get colossal here, and that is three thousand attack. And uh, gonna crack in. What's well, here is we could actually we could get back our Armageddon Knight here, but but who are we getting? Just gonna We're... go through the motions just to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then oh, I feel kind of bad because we we did kind of, like our play was gonna work regardless. To be honest, if you look at his back row, but yeah. he didn't because uh, we would have just burialed and uh, I think still been able to do the same play. Anyway, he takes three thousand here. Uh, I, you can set burial, I guess. It's fine. Doesn't really matter, but yeah. We should. How could we not have expected he's gonna play dragons when it's dragon ninety five? He has ninety five dragons in the deck, clearly. He's literally just making his attack go to grave and BP, no? No? <laughs> didn't, didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Dude, he's getting us. He's getting us uh, with the tech picks. I mean, it doesn't do anything, but, you know, it's funny. No, it does less than nothing. <laughs> it's actually, like, sort of actively bad for him. But, okay. Sure. sure we take this. <laughs> I, uh, wow. I just love that we just saw Copycat in our year 2024. It's great. It's not yeah, a warrior. This is I, wish. A, this is, I don't know if this is the best uh, pitch of like <laughs> this being the best deck or like this being, you know, a great format or whatever. But I think, think this is, is a great format that you're seeing this. Take, I'm sorry. We take, we take what we can get, you know? <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, just swinging and passing. Yeah, yeah. Can't do anything else this turn. Shout outs to Dragon95, everyone. I love it. Just, it. Every see, other... People will complain. People will complain, oh, ladder is so uncompetitive or whatever. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, you're going to play against some Dragon 95s, and you're going to like it. I think what's interesting okay. is that every other game I think we've played of uh, in this series so far has been against, like, a like like a tier deck minimum, surprisingly. Uh, this is, like, the first one that's, like, maybe not so much. <laughs> maybe not so much. Maybe the copycat tier. <laughs> so, anyway, what are we thinking um, for Cyborg? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, we're going second, which matters a little bit, and he had all the Dragon stuff. So, I like Oppression, but yeah. I, I think Oppression's pretty good. And uh, Vortex should definitely come in. I like that a lot. Um, I think that cards that can come out return, actually. I, I think that that gets a little hard to resolve. It could be too slow. I think that... So, like, does shoot going second? I think I do against this type of deck, at least. Okay. Um, sure. I would take out the Gores. Um, sometimes they have Drago. I don't know. This guy is hard to predict. He has um, Divine Wrath. We got to look out. Yeah. I, well, just, <laughs> just to counter that Divine Wrath, we might need to put in, like, a Dust Trader or something. I would probably just side those two cards and call it good. What about Chrome? I, kinda... I mean, we saw Debris called the Haunted. When I play against a deck like this that I don't really know <laughs> what they have going on, and to be honest, like, doesn't... I just don't want to lose to myself drawing bad. Sure, I think sure. Crow is one of those cards you can draw that okay. just bricks you. We'll just run this, then. It's fine. It's okay. Like, we I was thinking DDB. Oh, DDB and, like, other stuff, too. But, like, again, it's just, like, our engine probably beats his. Whatever his engine is, we, we don't really know yet. But... <laughs> I was about to say, we know everyone watching this right now is rooting for Dragon95 to just obliterate us. I mean, Loki, I am too. I might have to start telling you some <laughs> questionable things. Oh, shit. Okay, well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Even even the copycat deck might be able to win if it opens Future Fusion. All right. Now, the real question is, what are, what dragons are we dumping off of this? Yeah, okay. it's not. Right. One, at least right. one of them's going to be some wild shit. Okay. We have the typical offenders so far. Yeah, maybe two red eyes. And then, and then it's going to be two red eyes and something crazy. That's my prediction. <laughs> Maybe it could just be blue eyes, like two red eyes, blue eyes. Maybe he plays white. Prime. Okay. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's a good at card. least a, a fade card. Like, yeah. I've seen it. 
T oh no, he just said two all, all art. art right at my, me. My bad. He confused me with that one. <laughs> I love you, I love, the, I love you, Yeah, so I love much. the two different arts. It's crazy. Turn one red eyes, I guess. Because he can make a dark fire dragon and then kind of banish it. That's mm -hmm. that's usually what the dragon decks like to do. But he or, is the all powerful Magna Drago. How could we forget? Yeah, I didn't think about that. Just hard make going. Too. Okay. Dude, turn one Goyo bigger than all our guys. <laughs> you love to see it. Um okay. Okay. So we've drawn we've drawn all our bricks. Um fantastic. Just like a classic classic scenario. It goes without saying we're gonna have to cook here. But I think the cooking in, in this particular scenario can just take the form of something like MSD on the background. It's dust. Maybe a a normal summon dark greffer. Sure. Cryo. A, a pit yeah, well, yeah. Pitch plague spreader zombie. And here I think we're sending uh Sirocco and I'm probably a uh, Stacking, stacking for Plague? Arm, yeah, stacking Armageddon Knight. I'm just trying to think if I want to pitch both or just one here. And I think the answer is just one. Um, for Brio, obviously. Yeah. And I'm trying to think which one that will be. What are we Because we could hit him. We could hit him for 46 if we pitch Value and Banish. But okay. if he has any way, uh, another Synchro play um, to get back over, that's going to be... He's going to clear the Brio, and we won't probably won't have any out to, you know, his big monster. Sure. Necrogarna could help protect us from that scenario, but a lot of the ways he might put a big guy down would probably beat the Necrogarna anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think here I'm just going to send it, like, pitch Vayu, yeah, bounce the Goyo, and then uh, banish the two, hit him for 46. Yep. That will That's what we call a two-turn clock, here. a classic... Classic Edison maneuver. Bit of Gore's protection here and, with the future fusion. Yeah, and so he still has another turn on that. He's not gonna be able to get anything. What he can do is like you know banish the two red eyes, banish two or he sent two wyverns, right? Two wyverns. But then if he if he does just that, we're gonna have two cards to pitch and um, still be able to kill him. Now there's a lot of stuff here like brain control is really bad for us, but our hand was just so bad honestly that we needed to make a play like this. Like we drew all our all our send targets, and we weren't yeah. really going to be able to like set stuff and survive because uh, if he does have a crackback, like something like a, a if he's holding the third red eyes, that's really the best way for him to do it, um, or just brain control. But he doesn't. <laughs> oh, wait, I wasn't expecting that. The copycat coming in clutch. It really is. <laughs> this is see. This is why we should have had the necrogarden. Yeah, should have. <laughs> but they don't get to. Yeah, I was going to say they don't get to use their wyverns. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we're just going to do a classic uh, go for game where we yep. summon Armageddon, use effect. And there we go. Okay. Okay. That's, that's how it's done. You you fought valiantly, Dragon95. But, uh... Shout out to Copycat, <laughs> dude. He's showing us. He didn't even draw his floodgates. Damn. <laughs> this deck was wild. I love I yeah. love Yu-Gi-Oh. I love But that. in any case, like we were saying, this may not have been the typical deck you will sit across from the table of when you're playing in Edison. But also... You may, you never know. People are always innovating in Edison. There was like the rock deck recently that's like picked up like huge uh, amounts of support yeah. and popularity. Uh, people are always cooking in this format. I think that's one of the fun things about it. Um, so I might, this might have to be the next deck on the channel. You know, I'm gonna have to cook with <laughs> Copycat, uh, Magna Drago, Pius Control. I know, we don't get to see the full list. Whatever will we do? In any case, uh, James, thank you so much for coming on the channel. Any final thoughts on the deck? No, uh, Vayu best deck. I don't know. I'm hoping some, maybe someone can dethrone it this coming year so I don't have to play a full year of Vayu because I'm pretty feeling pretty locked into it now. But uh, yeah, can, uh, follow the channel. Uh, James Ark, the professor. You know, I've been a little bit slacking on content since the new year, but we're going to get back into it. And, uh, you know, catch me IRL at a New York local or uh, 3 p 3 YCS. I'll probably be attending that. And uh, yeah, I hope to meet you guys and hope this could be a good value introduction. It's definitely one of my favorite decks and I think one of the most fun decks in Edison format. Well, thank you all so much for watching. James, we appreciate you for coming on and we'll see you next time.